So the chapter today is chapter number 4 and that is exemptions from GST. What is expected by the institute from this chapter that you should be knowing? You said describe the power of the government to grant exemptions under CGST and IGST. For that provisions are only two sections that is section 11 of CGST Act and section 6 of IGST Act same provisions are bound to be there in SGST Act also but that is not a part of our syllabus, so I am not referring to that. Right? Then next thing is provide an overview of the goods exempt from GST. So in this chapter, few references have been given. They have not given a complete list of the goods which are exempt. Right? For that, you can see uh, on <coughs> page number 17. A footnote is given. Students may go through the complete list of the goods exempt from GST on the CBC website. Right? So here we have only references. But after the completion of lecture, I'll give you a complete list of all the goods and services which are exempt. Then third point is identify and analyze the various services exempt from GST. Now for the purpose of services, go to page number 18 and hear from a complete notification number 12 of 2017 issued under CGST Act has been given. So this notification number 12 of 2017, this is having the complete list of the exemptions given to the services. And here we have a list of 81 services which are exempt and some more description has been given on the next page, three more exemptions. So if we look at this chapter, we are supposed to know these two sections which are alike and we need to know notification number 12. of 2017 CGST and in bracket this is R. <clears throat> if you know this much means you know the entire chapter. Right? In this notification we have services which are exempt right so the three points which are expected by the institute knowing the provisions of provisions are these only the knowing the pros goods which are exempt for this institute has given a reference and then they have said refer the website I'll give you complete list and then notification number 12 of 2017 this is of CGST because the same notification is there for IGST as well that is number 9 but IGST are right so if you know this you know the entire chapter and for the purpose of exam practical questions this is most valuable chapter So there was a question what type of practical questions can be framed in GST now. So the questions will be same as those used to be in service tax. Compute the amount of service tax payable. Right? Person is providing n types of services, different type of services. Some are taxable, some are exempt, some are subject to abatements. So compute the amount on which the service tax is payable. Right? 
so here also it is going to be same question that person's turnover and the bifurcation is given and then you are you are required to compute the amount of gst payable right that will be something later whether cgst sgst or it is igst that is the later part right because that is very simple either interstate or interstate but the real question will be computation of the amount on which the GST has to be computed. Right. So unless you know the exemptions, you cannot answer that. Right. So from the perspective of practical questions, this is one of the most important chapters. Got it clear? Another important chapter will be valuation. So valuation plus exemptions combined together, these are the basis for any practical question. Got it? Now what is the meaning of exempt? Let us start the chapter, page number 2. <coughs> Directly starting with para number 2. <coughs> what is the meaning of exempt? Exempt supply means what? Exempt supply, it is having multiple things. Number one, nil rate. And the best example of this is export right then exempt then non taxable three things combined together that is exempt in absence of this definition Exempt will be in only this one, right? So they said, no, this is not the case. When we say exempt supply, it means the supply. So either goods or services which are subject to nil rate, which have been exempted in accordance with these provisions and also which are non-taxable, right? So you need to have the list of non-taxable things also. Right. So you know which are subject to exemptions, which are non-taxable, so rest everything will be taxable. Right. So whether it is easy to remember taxable or it is easy to remember otherwise. If you know these two things, everything else is taxable. Because nil rate is also rate of tax. Got it? So you must focus on this. Okay? Now proceeding further, coming to page number 3, lots of definitions are given. Lots of definitions, but these are not to be read at this point of time. Because all these relate to various exemptions allowed. When we go in the exemption at that point of time, we need to come back in ev and read every definition. If you read as a whole, it will be boring. Right. So we need to come on the definitions again and again. Now coming to page number 14, <coughs> the statutory provisions. <coughs> So that is section 11 of CGST as well as section 6 of IGST. Right? Now these two sections authorize the central government to allow exemptions. But on the recommendations of the council. Right? Now when we say exempts, exemption, Now this exemption may be partial or
powerful this exemption may be conditional or full when we say full in other word this is absolute right exemption may be given to transaction exemption may be given to person exemption can be given to specific goods or services one important exemption which used to be there in excise and service tax that is area wise exemption now the concept of area wise exemption is gone concept of area wise exemption has been removed right so now when we say exemption exemption does not mean no tax because various types of exemptions can be there say for example when the transaction is exempt for the same goods or same services another transaction will be taxable right so when the transaction is exempt so one transaction is exempt particular type of transaction is exempt right say services by educational institution so educational institution giving services to the staff to the students those are exempt but their services with the outsiders which have no relation with these activities those are taxable so exemption is not given to the educational institution what type of transaction it is does it relate to the education to the students does it relate to the staff it is exempt right if a school is having auditorium and it is rented out for some other function it will be taxable got it now the person when person is exempt he doesn't have to pay other person doing the same transaction he has, is liable to pay and for the for that the best example is threshold limit person not having annual turnover of 20 lakhs and the person having turnover of 20 plus lakhs so what is exempt there the person is exempt neither goods nor services nor transaction nothing is exempt but person is exempt right goods or services are exempt so the person dealing in different type of goods some goods are exempt some goods are taxable right so exemption carries different meaning at different places got it clear now let us read the provisions subsection 